Hello, I'm Greg. Welcome to my channel, Midnight Oil Software. In this video, I'm going to show you really quickly how we can add a second Cinemachine virtual camera so we can transition between different views in our scene. So in my previous video, I showed you how I set up a target group camera. And that camera basically allows us to keep both of the dinosaurs in my typing racing game in view the entire game, no matter how far apart they get. So as they get farther apart, the camera smoothly zooms out. And as they get closer together, the camera smoothly zooms in. So what if we added another virtual camera so we can start out with a different field of view. And then when the countdown starts, we can switch over to this camera view here where we see both of our dinosaurs from the side, which is how we're gonna follow them throughout the rest of the race. So I'm gonna go over here to my camera and light group and I'm going to right click and I'm gonna go down here to Cinemachine and add virtual camera. And I'm just gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this distance shot for lack of a better name. I'm gonna have it follow the racers and I'm gonna have it look at the racers. All right, so this is the view we've got right now. So what we can do is we can play around with this a little bit. We can go over here to our body on the camera. So the, there's a lot of components on this camera. There's its aim, there's its body, there's transitions. Uh, what we wanna look at first though is the body and we wanna look at the follow offset. So right now it's following at an X offset of zero, a Y offset of zero, and then a Z offset of negative 10. I wanna raise the Y offset up so we're kind of looking down at the players. And I want to move the X offset over here a little bit. And then let's play around with the Z. So that I think is a pretty interesting view to start off with, all right? And what I want to do is I want to add a script to this camera and light group here. And I'm going to call it our camera manager. And it's going to handle transitioning between this shot and this shot. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down under my scripts. And I'm going to go into my managers folder. I'm going to right click, create C sharp script. And I'm going to call this camera manager and let Unity recompile that. And I'm gonna select this camera and light and I'm gonna drag that camera manager script right there. And then I'm gonna double click on it to open it up in my source code editor. And here we are, let me just move that over. So I'm going to add a couple of serialized fields to this, oops. There we go. And I want these to be just game objects. And also this needs to be capitalized correctly. Game object, if I can type. And I want to have distance camera and race. I'm gonna call it target group camera. I'm just kind of winging this as we go. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to inject our signal bus because we are going to subscribe to the game state changed signal so we can know when the countdown starts so we can switch the camera. So first of all, in awake, I am going to, actually I'm going to do this in start. Now it's amazing how GitHub Copilot kind of knows what I want to do. It knows that I want to subscribe to the on game state changed event. Um, so I'm going to kind of do this, but what I'm actually going to do is say signal. I'm going to use a little Lambda here and I'm going to say game state change signal dot game state. And I'm going to go ahead and create that function. I'm just going to call this game state. And so if game state equals countdown, then I want to say that the distance camera set active false and the target group camera set active true. So as soon as we start 
the countdown, we're going to transition over to that race camera. And if you ever see this squiggly here, this is something that in this case, JetBrains Rider is suggesting. It's suggesting that I invert this if statement to redu reduce nesting. So I have this if statement and then nested inside that is this block of code. If I was to invert that, come on now, don't, don't do me wrong. Okay, if I invert that if, it basically would just do a return if it's not the countdown. So this is no longer nested inside of an if statement. It's just up to you which one you want to do. I'm just showing you that so you can know what JetBrains Rider was suggesting. Um, I don't want to do anything here. What I actually want to do is I want to say distance camera set active true and target group camera set active false. So initially we're going to start off with our distance camera. That should be all we need to do. Let me jump back out in the Unity. And we need to assign our cameras here to our camera manager. Uh, first thing I want to do though, this is just called virtual camera. So I'm going to rename this to target group camera, just so it's obvious what camera it is. And if we pick our camera and light here, you see our camera manager, I'm going to drag target group camera here, and I'm going to drag distance shot to here. Um, I think that should be all that we need. Oh, one thing I want to do is I want to initially disable the target group camera. So I want to make sure we're starting on this camera from the very beginning. So let's go ahead and hit play. So you can see we've got that view to start with. I'm going to click start and you can see it transitioned over to that view and then ding, there we go. All right. Easy peasy Japanesey. So there you go. We have two different virtual cameras. We have a simple script to transition between them. I hope you found that informative and entertaining. If you did, do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button. Be sure to jump over to my Discord channel. There'll be a link in the description. So if you have any questions or comments, you can post them there. Check out my Highland Panic game on Steam or the Apple App Store or Android. I will put a link for those in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck on your game development journey.